Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Marine propulsion has varied quite a bit over the years, from oars and paddles to sails. However, the creation of the mechanized marine propeller truly changed the way ships could move, how far they could travel, and the speeds they could reach. Propellers work by pushing water away from the boat as they spin. This creates thrust, allowing the ship to move forward at a consistent pace. When reversed, the propeller pulls water toward it, allowing ships to move backward as well. This was a revolutionary time and energy saver. And eventually led to the development of larger, more advanced ships. And as the ships got bigger, the propellers got bigger as well. Despite hundreds of years of technological advancement, ship propellers are still largely manufactured the same way they were in the early days. The only real difference is the number of machines and digital tools used versus direct human labor. Regardless of the diameter of the finished piece and the number of blades, the process starts with pattern manufacturing. At Wartsilicorp in Spain, this is done with 3D printers and allows for the creation of full-size wooden propeller models. These models are then used to create molds using cement or condensed sand. The blades are then cast by having liquid metal poured into the mold. After some time for curing, the mold can be broken, revealing the rough propeller shape. This must then be machined and ground to ensure the blade surface is properly formed and smooth. This is followed by polishing, which improves the look of the blade and removes any tiny imperfections that might affect its performance. Lastly, all of these separate blades fit together on the hub, forming a finished propeller to be tested. Though it is still technically a propeller, the azimuth thruster is a completely different take on propulsion. The brainchild of a German engineer, azimuth thrusters are installed in pods at the back of the vessel. Unlike traditional propeller systems which are static, these pods can be rotated on their horizontal axis. This not only improves maneuverability, but also eliminates the need for a rudder. ABB is one of the companies known for producing some of the most advanced models of azimuth thrusters. The thrusters produced by the company range in size from modest to very large so a number of cranes and lifting systems must be used during the manufacturing process.
First, the bearings are assembled and then fit into the rotor housing. From there, the system can be tested for flaws. At this point, the entire pod will be installed aboard the waiting ship. Only after this will the actual propellers be fixed into the system. These thrusters can actually move 360 degrees, allowing ships to perform amazing maneuvers they could never have attempted before. Just as it's important to remove any potential flaws on a propeller surface during manufacturing, it's also crucial that ship's propellers be maintained while they are in the ocean. Barnacles, corrosion, and algae growth can drastically affect the performance of these propellers and cost companies millions in excess fuel usage. To avoid this, ship owners typically hire special commercial divers to go into the water and polish the entire propeller system. This is usually accomplished with handheld tools like grinders and sanders, which remove the marine buildup and return the hub and blades to a like new condition. Of course, the larger the ship, the bigger the propeller. This means certain jobs can take hours, whereas others might only take a few minutes. As important as it is to keep the propellers of these giant ships clean, it's also important not to ignore the rudder. Rudders are placed behind the propellers and are used to direct the flow of water to either side. In ships that don't use azimuth thrusters, this is what ultimately allows the vessel to steer from side to side. Unfortunately, just as a fouled propeller can reduce a boat's energy loss by as much as 10%, a stern rudder can cause turbulence that reduces the vessel's overall speed. If allowed to corrode, it's possible that the rudder might suffer catastrophic damage or breakage. If it were to occur in the middle of the ocean, this might prevent a boat from being able to steer itself at all. Fortunately, the same diving crews responsible for propeller cleaning and maintenance can also grind and polish the rudder to prevent damage. Though the propeller and rudder are undoubtedly very important to the function of a ship, no part is more crucial than the hull itself. However, the parts of the hull that remain underwater are also susceptible to the same corrosion and marine buildup as the other components, which can slow the ship down, increase drag, and ruin the ship's overall fuel efficiency. Since the hull is much larger than the propeller or rudder, underwater maintenance companies often utilize special self-propelled vacuum devices to perform the cleaning. These large polishers easily move quickly from side to side along the hull removing barnacles and other buildups along the way.
This also allows the maintenance technicians to inspect the hull for damage or weaknesses without the ship having to return to the dry dock. Due to the constant waves and corrosive environment, ships and their various systems require regular maintenance. Depending on the nature of the repair or refurbishment, this can either be done while the ship is at sea or within a dry dock. Dry docks are man-made channels connected to waterways like lakes, rivers, and oceans. They are gated allowing boats to enter and have the channel sealed off behind them. Once sealed, powerful pumps can be used to drain the water out of the channel. This leaves the boat sitting atop a series of support blocks and gives repair and cleaning crews full access to the ship's full engines. A ship equipped with azimuth thrusters can have each one removed, taken apart, and refurbished while it remains safely in a dry dock. Once the thrusters and their various components have been returned to pristine condition, they can be reassembled and reinstalled. If the crew is able to avoid any direct damage, these thrusters will last several years before another maintenance cycle is required. These engineers are performing refurbishment on a main propulsion crankshaft for a massive container vessel. This ultra-complex piece of equipment must be carefully inspected, disassembled, and repaired in order to ensure the client's satisfaction. The crankshaft is the part of the engine that converts the reciprocating motion into a rotational motion. Without it, the ship's propeller would be unable to turn and generate thrust. Though crankshafts are designed with extremely high fatigue strength and wear resistance, they require regular maintenance to prevent failure. This particular model weighs dozens of tons and can take hours to disassemble properly. Fortunately, the ship maintenance crews have access to powerful lifts and other machinery that can help streamline the process. Even after a ship's engines have been properly installed, they still need to be aligned to ensure maximum efficiency. When propellers are not putting effort in the same direction, it can lead to issues with maneuverability and speed. Both of these can drastically affect fuel consumption and put unnecessary strain on the engine as it attempts to perform at the same level. This particular method involves using lasers to check the alignment down to the slightest millimeter. The result of this extensive investigation into the inner and outer workings of the engine is a system that will perform as expected and maximize value for the ship's owner. From the largest cargo ships to military vessels and recreational boats, there is no better way to avoid catastrophe than to perform regular cleaning and maintenance on crucial systems. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.